Oh. There he is. Yeah, came back for it. Came back for it. Power pull down. He's a nice one. How's it going, folks? And welcome back to TRF. On today's episode, we're going to talk about the top three and maybe one or two honorable mention lures for the springtime to hopefully help you catch bass just like this one right here. My name is Tyler and love to talk about it. As you can see, folks, he absolutely choked it. Let's get into it. Well, what a fun way to start the video. My name is Tyler, if y'all are new to this channel, and I make it my goal right here to help you guys become better bass anglers. And so, if that describes you, somebody who wants to catch more fish, hit that subscribe button, you belong here. Now, bass fishing can get complex in a hurry, and so I wanna take a few videos every single season and talk about some of the high percentage lures that can help you guys. No matter if you're a pond angler, kayak angler, or a bass boat angler, as I'm filming this video from today, but of course, it can apply to all you guys. I wanna go over some high percentage lures that can help y'all catch fish no matter where you are, starting with pre-spawn lure number one, and that is the vibrating jig. The vibrating jig should be an absolute no-brainer for those of us who have bass fished for a while because it is a fish catcher. I don't care if you're around shallow wood, shallow grass, deeper grass for a heavier vibrating jig. If you're not throwing this thing in the pre-spawn, you are missing out. Depending on where you are fishing, bass will feed on different types of forage as they get ready for the pre-spawn and the spawn. And so when it comes to winter time, the more bait fishy colors of vibrating jigs work really well. And then as bass start to transition closer to the bank, you can catch them shallower and shallower, usually on more green pumpkins, crawfish color. I believe this is the Falcon Lake Craw color of the Strike King Thunder Cricket. And I pair it with the Falcon Lake Craw Rage Menace. These two together make a really killer combo when it comes to targeting fish that are feeding on either crawfish or bluegill. And like I said, if you're not throwing this thing, you are definitely missing out. It is so versatile. It can be fished in so many conditions, but it's not very weedless. We're gonna talk about a more weedless shallow presentation here in a second. But if you guys wanna see a video on how to work, how to throw, how to catch fish on the Vibrating J, a masterclass, I will have that linked in the video description as well as popping up here in the corner maybe. With the Vibrating Jig out of the way, I say we move on to lure number two for the pre-spawn, and that is the shallow diving crankbait. Now this category of lure here is gonna take a little bit longer to talk through, and that's because there's quite a lot of shallow diving crankbaits that you use and quite a lot that I use. There's about four that I use all throughout the pre-spawn depending on the situation. So we're gonna start by talking about the ones that are best around grass. I don't care what type of grass you have in the body of water you're fishing, as long as it's not some kind of snotty, you know, booger type grass that a lot of ponds have, you can catch fish shallow in grass in the pre-spawn with these two crankbaits right here, a lipless crankbait and one that you're gonna see a ton of fish catches on and I think coming up either in the next video I put out or the one after that, this here is the Strike King Hybrid Hunter. As grass starts to rebound from the, the die off it kinda has in the winter, you'll find grass go from brown to green. That green grass has a ton of nutrients, it brings in the entire ecosystem, has a lot of oxygen in that grass and bass will stay there, they will spawn there, they will continue to raise their young there and then they will spend and sometimes all summer underneath those mats of grass. And so when it comes to you know, the pre-spawn time period, water temps are in the lower 50s to lower 60s. That's the pre-spawn, at least in my experience. Uh, bass are gonna be around grass all the time. If your grass flat, grass edge, grass line is in deeper water, a vibrating jig is my go-to. But as you'll see by tons of fish catches on this video and more videos here in the pre-spawn on my channel, the Hybrid Hunter is, in my experience, the best crankbait out there for cranking around shallow grass. It is able to free itself from the grass so much better than any other crankbait I've ever used, specifically better than the square bill. So moving away from the grass, we have the square bill crankbait and we have the flat-sided crankbait. These are very, very similar, but the action they have in the water is not. A flat-sided crankbait like this chick magnet crankbait right here has a lot tighter of a wobble in the water 
and a square bill crankbait wobbles side to side in the back that really gives off a lot more action than your flat sided crankbait. They both have their place. In my experience, if the water is less than 55, I'm throwing the flat side a ton. And if the water is above 55, I'm throwing this square bill a ton. But neither one of these are really good around grass. These are more of your wood and especially shallow rock scenario lures. I have had some amazing days fishing a crankbait shallow when that water starts to warm up. And I'm not talking about a 10 degree warm from the winter, maybe even a one to two to three degree warm from a warm night and a warm day. You're gonna have fish that move up that are cruising those rocks, looking for bait fish, looking for crayfish. And uh, you can have an amazing day throwing a shallow diving crankbait. So I will have a square bill instruction linked below. I don't think I've made an instructional on the flat side, but I hope to here in a little bit. Although we may be too late already. I might have to wait until next year when the water gets cold again. So flat side of crankbaits, grass ones, rock ones, and wood ones. They are an amazing lure to throw. And like I said, I will have any videos that are applicable to these lures to teach you guys more about how to throw them and catch fish on them linked in the video description. But make sure you guys stay tuned to the end because we're going to have a lot of fish catches coming on the hybrid hunter. And I'm excited to show you guys. And last but not least, lure number three we have have for the pre-spawn is going to be our flashy swimmer. Now if the vibrating jig can be thrown in really any water column but especially shallow water, where do you throw this or why would you ever throw this when you can just throw the vibrating jig? Oftentimes they don't want a lure that has a crazy amount of action. That's for the fish that are a little bit deeper, that are feeding up, getting ready for the spawn. But as soon as they get up there onto the really, really shallow sand, grass, stump flats, oftentimes a lure with a ton of action and vibration is not going to trigger those fish. As a matter of fact, it might even scare them away. Before I sat down to film this portion right here, I was fishing behind me and I saw these fish cruising the banks, getting ready to spawn and they would actually run run away from my shallow diving crankbait. So that is a situation where you throw the flashy swimmer. It is a completely weedless swim bait. This here is the 4.75 inch Strike King Rage Swimmer in a sexy shad, my favorite color. And then I think this is an owner flashy swimmer hook. I will have everything as always linked in the video description below, both the Strike King's website and Tackle Warehouse. So if y'all could please be shopping for your tackle using the affiliate links in the video description, that would help me out a ton. Due to the weedless Texas rig here of the flashy swimmer and the tiny little blade, it serves the perfect function in my arsenal for catching those shallow cruising bass, making long bomb casts with this thing. I have caught bass from the shore, from a kayak for sure, and definitely from my bass boat when it comes to those bass that are all almost spawning. So that was my top three pre-spawn lures. We're going to go into one honorable mention though. And I think this is definitely a necessary addition to this video because we didn't talk about anything slow. Those were all moving baits, some more reactionary than others, but all moving baits. And so what do you do when they're not biting moving baits in the pre-spawn, specifically when you get closer to the spawn? You throw the honorable mention of today's video, and that is the soft plastic with little to no action. If y'all watched any professional fishing tournament coverage, especially Major League Fishing uh, in this pre-spawn time period, you will have seen a lot of guys throw a Texas Rig Senko. This here is a striking Ocho. I love the six inch version or the Texas Rig Tube. And I know a lot of people out there love to throw a curly tail worm or a creature bait with tons of appendages or a rage crawl all year round. And while that can work, especially for less pressured fish, as soon as you get on a public body of water like the pros fish on, you see almost all of them go to soft plastics, whether they're casting or flipping and pitching them that have almost no action at all. And I think one reason for that could, of course, be the fishing pressure. But another reason could be whether the water is really cold and it's the early pre-spawn and those fish don't want to chase down a soft plastic that's moving a ton or has a lot of action. Or it's the late pre-spawn almost into the spawn time period when those bass are just kind of cruising around. Just like I mentioned with the difference between the shallow diving crankbait, the vibrating jig, and the flashy swimmer, sometimes those fish in the pre-spawn just don't want a soft plastic with a whole lot of action. Now, as our lakes transition more from the pre-spawn into the full-blown spawn, that's when I'll go more into soft plastics with tons of appendages, lots of action because I want to trigger a bass into biting on a bed or trigger them into leaving that bed you know, two or three feet away to come find my soft plastic creature bait. That's when I have a lot more action. But the pre-spawn is the Texas rig straight Ocho or the Texas rig tube. 
So that is going to be it for our sit down portion. But like I said, we're gonna have some awesome fish catches right here, heading back on the water on the Hybrid Hunter. And make sure y'all stay tuned here on the channel. We're gonna have an incredible video talking about the Hybrid Hunter very, very soon. Once that's out, I will leave it also linked in the video description. The video description is an amazing place. We'll see you guys out on the water. Gosh, there's one, there's one. Power pull down, we find a little school of them. Beautiful, we love it. We love it when they get the old hybrid hunter. Dude, Hackney is right. With every one of these hybrid hunter they sell, they ought to sell a pair of pliers because that's what it's gonna take to get the hooks out. Even for just the skin hooked ones, I need the pliers almost every time. There's one. Woo! Come on, bring it up, bring it up. Yes, sir. Beautiful fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. There we go. There we go. Got it. Man. Slapped at it. And then, oh, I got him underneath the, underneath the face. Beautiful fish. Chill out, buddy. Chill out. Ha, ha, ha hybrid hunter to the face. Like I mentioned, if y'all missed my hybrid hunter instructional video, go watch it. Cause we teach you guys how to fish this bait and catch these guys. Oh, geez. Oh, knocked the absolute snot out of it. Holy cow. Oh my gosh. And as you guys can probably see, that's not a normal uh, crankbait hook set. And that's because the Hybrid Hunter is not a normal crankbait. It's got heavier hooks on it. It is meant to be fished in and around shallow cover and grass. And you kind of got to rip them to get them out of this stuff so they don't get snagged on the treble hooks as you're fighting them in. That is so much fun though. I'm not going to complain ever about that kind of bite. Oh, I will complain about that. Backlash. When they want this thing, they knock the poop out of it. There we go. Right out here in the middle of this lake, there's a tiny, I wouldn't say tiny, I can't tell how big it is yet, but there's a grass hump out in the middle. So I'm going to spot lock us and see if there's more fish where that guy came from. Gosh, that was so cool. That was so cool. I watched him miss it once and come back for it. <laughs> doesn't have it by much. But we got him in, yes sir. That right there is some cool stuff. Not a giant, I thought he was much bigger when he ate, but it's still awesome to watch one swipe at it and you're like, is he still there? And then two seconds later, he comes back for it again. Love it. Gosh, there's one right on the edge, right on the grass edge. Should be more in here. Yes, sir. Look at that. Just got him in the corner of the mouth. Boom, shakalaka. Start a phone when you say it is. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I watched him eat at the stinking boat. That was so cool. And if this fish was a fat fish, I would not have been able to boat flip that. That was so awesome. He chased it. I paused it right at the boat. And a really, really skinny three and a half pounder ate. That fish is way too skinny. Probably got a Senko down in his throat. That was cool. I love this bite. The pre-spawn is awesome. Oh, there's one. There's one. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Another amazing thing about the pre-spawn is that you can you can pass through an area multiple times and either you will have missed fish or fish will filter in. So I either missed this fish a few minutes ago or it's a brand new one to the area. Beautiful. Another one. That's two casts in a row, baby. That's two casts in a row. Oh, nice one. Nice one, boys and girls. Oh, oh, how you want them to eat it. That right there, boys and girls, is how you want them to eat 
the hybrid hunter. Oh yes, this bait right here catches fish like this. Gosh, there's one, there's one, there's one. Holy cow, power pull down. Oh my gosh, chill out. Come on with it, buddy. Come on, bring it in, let's go, baby, yes. Definitely not ideal place for them to eat it, bottom of the mouth, but still got them in the boat. Well, boys and girls, that has been one heck of an episode. If you enjoyed it, hit that subscribe button. Well, I apologize for all the wind we had today. That's very characteristic of the springtime, windy calm, windy calm. But if you wanna see the instructional video that's dropping in a few days on this lure right here that I caught all of my fish on in today's video, how to throw it, where to throw it, and why to throw it, my name's Tyler. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time right here on TRF.